we're building a crafting system based on my last video's simple inventory where the inventory doesn't show zero items the crafting menu does because you still know those recipes so we're in unity 2019.3 we have an inventory already and now we have these new scripts that you can get from my github or you can create them as we go the new scripts are craftable crafting at ui the crafter and the slot holder which will hold all the slots for our inventory UI and our crafting UI. Go to my last video if you wanna see how to make this inventory UI with the slight slot item holder that we're going to use today. Otherwise, you can use your own UI that you've created yourself. You can pause here and take a look at our item script. Important is that it's got this function for doing stuff. Now we'll take a look at the craftable, which builds on the item it has a crafting ingredient struct which will hold the items that we need in order to build this craftable and the number needed of each of those items and then we'll hold an array of all those crafting ingredients now let's take a look at the inventory and the new things that are on that we have a new max items int which will um, essentially keep us from creating more slots than are necessary we have public access to our inventory we have an event that fires when we add anything to the inventory and when we remove anything which isn't efficient but is effective and then we have these two great methods that'll help us to find out if we have the number of an item required in order to build another and then the number of an item that we hold currently which will help us to know uh, the number which we can um, create now on the item slot ui we're going to create a button which will allow us to click on whatever is in our inventory UI and perform an action, uh, whatever we pass into this. So we will pass in the item, the number of the item that we have and an action for when we click on the button that's on this item slot. We will give it the icon of the item. And then if the button action is not null, we will remove previous listeners and add a listener for the new action. Now let's look at what's going to hold our item slot UI. So this is our base class for any of our inventory or crafting UI. This is going to hold all of our item slots. It's going to hold a, an object that uh, allows this to be turned on and off. It'll hold a, a prefab for all of our slot UI and it will hold the transform to which those slot UIs will be parented. Now in initialize UI, we will give this object the type. We will create the item slots and we'll do an initial update of each of those slots. In create item slots, we're going to create a number of slots. So for example, in the inventory, you saw that we have a max number of slots. That's the number that we will create. In update item slots, we're going to give each item slot a unique action and we can turn off the UI. Now we have our inventory UI, which is going to hold the type inventory. So we display any information about the inventory. So we'll hold a reference to the inventory. We will set the type in the initialization. We'll do base initialization, and then we'll listen to changes on the inventory. If you remember that event that fires when we add or remove items, that's what we're gonna to listen to in order to update item slots. So in update item slots, we are going to give the slots information about each item in the inventory. All right, so we're going to run a for each for each of the items in the dictionary in the inventory. All right, each key value pair uh, has a key and a value. The key is the item, and the value is the count of the item that we have in the inventory. Okay, so we will pass to the item slot the um, excuse me, we will, we will turn off the item slot if, if there is none of that item. And if there is some of that item, we will give the item slot a, an action. So we'll tell the item slot to remove the item from the inventory and we will do the action that's on the item. And then we will update the slot UI with the item, the count and the button action, and then we'll turn the item slot on. And then at the end, we're going to turn off all of the inactive or the unused item slots. So we'll make sure that we set those to false. We can't write this as if calling a method. We have to write it as if calling an action. 
Here's the most complex part of the tutorial. This is the crafter. It'll hold a reference to our crafting UI and to the inventory. We can't craft without an inventory, so we must couple this with the inventory, all right? We're going to make sure that we uh, are allowed to, that we can craft an item. We're going to check the number craftable uh, for a specific item. And then from that, we can check how many we can create for all of the items that we have in our um, recipe log, right? And, and if we know all these recipes, we have to know how many of each uh, we can create at any given moment based on what we have in our inventory, all right? We will add in our variables here. We're gonna make sure that we have our crafting UI, our inventory, and then we'll have um, the max number of recipes that this crafter will be able to carry, okay? This is the max number of slots that it's creating. It's not really a uh, true max. We aren't preventing this from having more than 12 recipes, okay? We're gonna have this list of craftables that we can use in the inspector to test this out and then we'll have a crafting inventory, which is another dictionary, all right? We will have a, an event which listens for changes to this class and we will add any of those craftables that are in that list to the inventory, okay? Um, whenever there is a change to the inventory, we're gonna find the number of craftable, uh, the number craftable of each item. And here we check the number of number craftable for a specific craftable by going to the inventory and saying, okay, if we have that uh, ingredient and the number of ingredients, what's the minimum number of that ingredient that we can, uh, what's the minimum number of this craftable that we can create based on the inventory items that we have right now, okay? So here you see that we, uh, get the number craftable by asking the inventory how many of this ingredient we have divided by the number that we need. And then we return either zero if there are, if there is a, uh, an ingredient that we don't have or the lowest number, right? Now here I'm making a mistake. I'm writing can craft item in the try craft item. Okay. So in can craft item, we're going through all the ingredients for a specific item. And then we're asking the inventory if it has, that item and the number needed of that item. So if it goes through that for loop, uh, if it goes through the whole for loop, it'll pass true, it'll return true. Now, when we do create an item, we wanna go into the inventory and remove all the ingredients from the inventory. And then we will return the item crafted. Now, when we try to craft an item, we're gonna ask if we can craft it. If we can't, then we're gonna create a warning that says, no, we don't have enough uh, stuff to do that and we'll return false. Otherwise, we'll craft the item and then we'll check if that uh, isn't null. If it isn't null, then we add the item to the inventory and we return true. Otherwise, we return false. If, the, uh, if it returns a null item, then we return false. Okay, then we'll have a learn new craftable we just added to the uh, inventory and then we have an event that fires. And then whenever we make changes in the inspector, we add it to the inventory and we fire that same event. So here we're gonna create our crafting UI. Remember that this is a type, we're passing in the type, which is the crafter. So we're holding information about the crafter. We're gonna reference that crafter. We'll set the type in initialization. We'll do our base in initialization and then we'll listen for changes on the crafter. When we have a change, we will update the item slots. We're gonna use Unity Events, Unity Action. When we click the button, we're gonna do this action. The action is tell the crafter to try and craft the item that's at this index, okay? Now you see that I make a mistake here. I don't turn on, I don't activate the item slot at this index, and I don't increase the index at the end of this for each loop. And you'll see that this uh, update item slots method is almost the exact same thing as we see in inventory UI. I will have this fixed in the GitHub script that you guys get. In the scene, I'm gonna duplicate my previous uh, inventory panel. I'm gonna go ahead and change its name. I'm gonna change the anchor points. Then I'll go in and I will uh, throw on the crafting UI script onto the main canvas. And then I'm gonna pass in its item slot UI for the prefab. 
I'll pass in the content parent and the holder object, which is the crafting panel. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to my player and I'm gonna put on the crafter. I'm gonna pass it the inventory and the crafting UI, and then I'm gonna create some craftables here. So I create three craftables. You can see that you put in the um, item name, description, and icon, just like an item, and then you add ingredients, okay? So for ingredients, it's an array, and each ingredient holds another item and the number needed of that item. All right, so go ahead and throw those onto the player. I press play. You'll see that I have some errors because I didn't uh, activate those uh, item slots and I didn't run through the index. So uh, here I am uh, debugging that. You can see that the item slots are actually created and that that first one, uh, because it's index zero, that first one actually did get set up. So let's go back to the code and fix that up. So all I have to do is activate the item slot at index and increase the index at the end of the for each loop. Since we already know the recipes, they are in our crafting menu by default. They're at zero until we pick up the items necessary in order to create those craftables. And you can see that that updates as we get the necessary materials for each craftable item. However, when we reduce um, an item in the inventory to zero, it doesn't deactivate. So we'll fix that now in the inventory UI. The simple fix is to continue to skip so that we don't go down and activate the item slot at that um, index in the for each. Now, if they're zero, they're removed from the inventory. I'm pressing tab to deactivate and activate the inventories. I'm gonna go ahead and go into my input manager. I'm making sure that I have an inventory key so when I press it, I call inventory UI and crafting UI and I change inventory state. So when we pick up items, we will see that our crafting menu updates. We can on the fly in play mode, update our craftables. We can change the uh, ingredients necessary for each craftable. So if I want to, instead of using stone and wood, create my houses, I want to use cards then I can change that right now in play mode. I can add a cards craftable. And as I create cards, it'll reduce the number of folders that I have. I can create houses now. I can click on those houses. It'll reduce the number of cards that I have in my inventory. And then I can change it back to what I had before, or I can change it to a roof and a, a window or a roof and a door. That's it for this video. Hopefully you uh, learned something from this. If you didn't, or if I don't explain things properly, let me know in the comments. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you don't like it. Uh, subscribe if you want more content like this. Next week, we will be doing mining, just like you see here. Um, and we'll continue this series uh, just like that. Hopefully we can get some building going on. And... Um, if you guys have any suggestions, then uh, I'll try and do a video about what you guys suggest. Thanks a lot for watching. Check the uh, description for links to the assets that I used. Everything was free, by the way.